Ladies and dudes, Andy here, day 186 of the No Win Show. We're continuing with our quest to answer a bunch of sex-related questions this week. This one is from a guy who's asked to remain anonymous. So his name is... No, I'm kidding. I'll keep it anonymous. His question is a bit of a deep question. I like this question. Um, I don't like that he's struggling with this, but I like this question in general. I think it's a good topic and something that probably doesn't get covered much in, especially like masculine self-improvement kind of spheres and spaces. This is a question that I think a lot of... um, I think a lot of websites, especially in the manosphere, wouldn't necessarily handle this question the same way I would. I'd just phrase it that way. And I know that some communities wouldn't be all that welcoming with a question like this or with someone who has this question. So we'll start there. I'll read out the question. I like having sex with guys and trans girls sometimes, but I feel very ashamed about it. And there are long periods of time where I have no desire for it. I feel very ashamed of my desire when I do have it. How can I feel comfortable being bisexual and integrating it into my life? I feel like I have to hide this. Girls are turned off by it, and guys judge me. Both are just projections, I'm sure. But also, I feel when I say I'm bisexual, people assume that I like girls and guys equally, which isn't true, but there isn't a word for it. Maybe I'm heteroflexible. Maybe that's a better word for me to use. So the first thing I'll make clear, and I think I've made this pretty clear. I've made this clear like on my forums and other places. I really couldn't give a shit who you fuck, right? Like I really couldn't care as long as you're having fun with them. They're having fun with you. As long as everyone's having a good time together and you're adding to each other's lives. Awesome. Like who gives a shit who you stick your penis in or who sticks their penis in you? Do whatever the fuck you want. I think in some parts, and it's not everywhere to be clear, but some parts of the manosphere Some parts of self-improvement, masculine self-improvement places are a little bit, there's like a little bit of gatekeeping of like, you have to be like a bro. You have to like love women and all this kind of shit. Yes, most of my website is aimed for guys who want girls, of course, but I'd never say like, get the fuck off my website if you're gay. I'd never like mock anyone for that shit. I genuinely don't give a shit who you have sex with. I just want you to be happy. So my website is kind of for everyone. I've given advice to women on here as well. So definitely don't feel ashamed about it. I hope you feel welcome. I hope most people feel welcome. And I think generally speaking, even on my forums, my forums are a very welcoming place. I know that everyone on there feels pretty much the same way I do. And if they don't, they're good enough to just not say anything. That's kind of, you know, awesome. That's what I want. So you're in pretty good company. You'd be fine. In terms of feeling very ashamed We'll start with you feeling ashamed that you like having sex with guys and trans girls sometimes, right? I get where the shame comes from because a lot of people will give you shit for that. Of course, I don't think that, you know, I think that goes without saying. I can't argue with that. Some people will mock the shit out of you. Some people will bully you. Some people will use horrible fucking language when they talk to you about it. Of course. Fuck those people. You know what I mean? Like... Fuck those people. They're fucking cunts. Like, who gives a fuck? Fuck those people. Cut them out of your life immediately. Anyone who treats you like shit for something like that, that really has nothing to do with them. Why does it matter who you like having sex with? Why the fuck does that matter to anyone else? Cut those people off. And just as a general rule, that goes for everything else. If you, I know some of you guys are, you know, working on getting laid more and some of your friends or your family or whatever or other people haven't reacted that well to it or they say that's a shallow goal why are you trying to have sex with girls what are you doing either cut those people off or just don't talk to them about this maybe that's a better way of saying it just never bring it up and cut that part of your life out from them or cut it off from them don't keep those people in your life or don't keep telling them about this shit so if you are having some people react negatively to the fact that you like sex with guys and trans girls fuck those people like they can fuck off Why the fuck would you tolerate someone that's going to make you feel like shit? Who the fuck has the right to make you feel like shit? And more to the point, why the fuck would you keep that piece of shit in your life? Fuck, they can fuck off. Like you, there are a million other people in your life or in the world that won't give a shit who who you have sex with. There'll be a lot of people that'll be like, cool, bro. Like do whatever you want, man. I'll support you, whatever your goals are. I'll help you with that. Let's push each other. Let's, 
you know, crush it. Let's live awesome fucking lives. Those are the people that you need to gravitate towards. And when you find those people, there are a million of those people, by the way. There's plenty of them on my forums. Your mission is to grab on tight and keep them in your life and build up this like tribe or this foundation or this group of people who support you and don't get, aren't going to judge you. Because yes, this is a sexual, like we're talking something specifically sexual here, but this does apply, like I said before, to like everything in life. If you have a group of people or you have a couple of people that will bring you down or tell you that your goals are stupid or tell you that your preferences and your likes are stupid or dumb or wrong or sinful or any of that shit, those people don't deserve a place at the table with you. They don't deserve a, to be a part of your life. They're just going to bring you down. They're just haters, so to speak. They really are. Anyone who actually gives a shit about other people doesn't hate on other people. You don't sit there trying to make other people miserable, especially not something like this, which again, has absolutely nothing to do with anyone. If someone is genuinely upset or insecure about the fact that you're having sex with guys or trans girls, that says a hell of a lot more about them than it says about you. And no, I'm not going to use the old cliche of like, maybe they're in the closet and maybe they're sick. I, I fucking hate that. That's that's like a cheap shot. But generally speaking, if someone is like extremely homophobic, that tells me that they there are bigger issues in their life that they're not addressing. I'm not saying they're a closeted gay or some stupid thing like that. What I'm saying is if they have enough time and energy to be focusing on other people and being negative their life cannot be going that well because people who have a kick-ass awesome life that they are genuinely happy with and everything in their life or most things in their life they are really happy with, you don't go around talking shit about other people. You certainly don't go around giving a fuck what everyone else is doing because you're too busy living a kick-ass life. You don't have time to give a shit what anyone else is doing. You're happy. Why would you give a fuck what anyone else is doing? You just want everyone else to be happy as well. You want the world to be sunshine and rainbows and blue skies and everything's wonderful and you can do what you want and I'll do what you want. If anyone is enough of a busybody that they care who you have sex with, take a deep breath and remind yourself, fuck, there must be something going wrong in this person's life. Have a bit of empathy for them. I know that's difficult when they're literally saying something fucked up to you, but have a little bit of empathy for them and be like, man, this person must be really hurting. They must be in a really shit place or maybe their life just isn't going the way they want. Maybe they're just, you know, caught up in trying to stick their nose in other people's business instead of fixing their own life and building a kick-ass life for themselves. I'm just going to cut myself off from them. I'm going to ignore what they said. I'm really sorry for that person. It kind of sucks. That must be a shitty way to go through life. You know, I'll move on. So that's your first answer. In terms of you feeling ashamed of your desire when you do have the urge to have sex with guys or trans girls, like why, man? Like that's that's like sexual shame and kink shaming and all that kind of stuff is something that you need to address. I have a lot of really fucking kinky, crazy desires. I could be very ashamed of them. I really like when girls call me daddy. I could be deeply ashamed of that, right? Like we could get into a whole fucking psychoanalyst psychoanalysis of why I like girls calling me daddy. You could be like, wow, you're such a fucking pedophile. What's wrong with you? You're a freak. I could get very ashamed about it. Or I could just take a deep breath and relax. And, you know, I've never been ashamed about it. This is just a weird example. But, you know, if I was, I would have to learn to take a deep breath and be like, whatever, this is just a bit of fun. I like when girls call me daddy. I don't know why it's hot. It's just kind of hot. I'm going to relax and have fun with it. I have plenty of other kinks that are really, really, really fucking kinky, right? I love pissing on girls. I love girls pissing on me. I love some really fucked up stuff like that, right? And that's perfectly okay. I just take a deep breath and say like, whatever, I could be ashamed of this, but I like doing it as long as they like doing it. Who the fuck is it hurting? It's not like I'm going and pissing on random strangers, right? I'm not doing crazy, kinky BDSM sex. I barely even bring up some of my wilder kinks to you guys. I keep that shit more to myself. I'm happy to talk about it, of course, but it's the point I'm making is it's not like I'm going out and like shoving it in everyone's face and making other people uncomfortable and, you know, doing anything like that. It's literally just, I like doing something. If the girl likes doing something, we'll do this together. Cool. That's how I want you to start framing this. If you have sex with other guys, as long as you're consenting, they're consenting, you both want each other. There's some actual desire there. You're not just using that to like, 
self-medicate or something, like you both actually want to fuck each other, then cool. Like relax and just say, this is a bit of fun. This is just one more sexual kink that I have. This is one thing on my bucket list. And every now and then I like to like scratch this itch and have a bit of fun with it. Same with the trans girls. It's like, yeah, that's just a kink of mine. It's a type of person I like. It's a specific scenario I like, however you want to define it. It's just something on my list. I like to scratch that itch every now and then. It's a bit of fun. She has fun. I have fun. Fucking awesome. Like who the fuck isn't having fun in that scenario? It's only anyone else who would care enough. And you don't have to tell anyone else, right? Like it's not like you have to go outside and be like, hey, everyone, I had sex with guys. I'm bisexual. You're allowed to keep this shit to yourself. I think that's maybe the one thing that you've been missing here. You don't have to be going around saying to everyone, I'm fucking guys. I'm fucking trans girls. You know, please don't judge me. Now, don't keep it all inside and never tell anyone. I'm very glad that you brought this up because it's obviously something you're ashamed about. It's something that you need to work through. Fine. But aim to be working towards a point where you're okay with just it being a fun thing that you do with people who consent, who want to do it with you. And that's all there is to it. Don't worry about what other people think about it. Don't worry about being ashamed about it. Just relax and just say it's one more thing on my bucket list it's just like one sexual kink that i have it's a lot of fun i like doing it they like doing it it's great in terms of you what you put here where you said i feel like i have to hide it because girls are turned off by it and guys judge me absolutely not fucking true absolutely not fucking true absolutely not fucking true um the second part guys judge you fine yeah sure okay we'll say that's true but the first part girls are turned off by it no 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 you even go on to say both projections i'm sure some girls will be turned off by it. There are a lot of girls that will be turned on by it. As someone who has had a hell of a lot of sexual kinks and different fantasies and all that, I'm here to tell you even the most fucked up stuff that you could ever envision in your entire head, we're talking like the most fucked up sexual kinks that I'm not even going to say on this goddamn podcast. Some girls will be turned on by that. A lot of girls will be turned off by it, but some will just be into it because it's fucking kinky and filthy and taboo and all that kind of stuff. So when you're talking about something that isn't even that taboo, like a bisexual guy is not like, you haven't said some insane fantasy, right? You're not talking about something crazy like fucking incest or something or rape or something like that. Bisexual is a pretty, you know, normal fantasy or a pretty normal like way to be. There are a ton of girls that will be turned on by that. That'll be incredibly hot, especially because they'll be like, shit, like, what if we have a threesome? That could be fucking amazing. Imagine, like, two guys getting turned on by me and fucking me, but also fucking each other. Like, wow, what a fucking good scenario that'd be. There's a ton of girls that will be into that. And the ones that aren't, you already know the answer. The answer is to cut them out of your life, to screen them out, to say, like, oh, you're not into that. Like, if, if you're on a date with some chick and you haven't told her you're bisexual or whatever, if she just goes like, oh, bisexual guys are gross, you can just be like, all right, okay, date's over. <laughs> like, like, why would I spend my time with someone that thinks I'm gross or that thinks that people who are turned on by the things that I'm turned on are, are gross? You can even kind of put it out there if you want. Maybe on a first date, you start screening for that. Maybe you should be like, have you ever had any, like, would you be turned on by a bisexual guy? Have you ever fantasized about like a threesome with two bisexual guys? And if the girl says like, no, that's gross, then you can be like, right, I'm not even going to meet you for the date. Maybe you say that on Tinder or when you get her phone number. Maybe you mention it on the first date. Start screening for that if that's something that's important to you. Like if you genuinely want a girl, and I would suggest doing that anyway because it's something that you said you're ashamed about. I would suggest it's probably best that if you're going to be having sex with girls and dating girls and, you know, spending time with them, friends with benefits and all that kind of stuff, you want to be screening in girls who are okay with who you are. And so that's a really good use of screening. Something big like this, the bisexual thing, if you can do that reasonably early on and say like, you know, what I said before, have you ever fantasized, would you have, would it turn you on to be in a threesome with two bisexual guys? Have you ever fantasized about that? Like frame some way of, figure out some way of framing it like that. The way I just said it is fine. And screen for the girls that are okay with it or would be turned on by it or would love to do it with you. You know what I mean? Like there'll be plenty of girls like that. In terms of guys judging you, yeah, of course, there'll be a ton of guys. Like, you know, I think we all know that masculinity and heterosexuality is definitely like heterosexuality is a very big part of masculinity. That doesn't mean you can't be masculine if you're gay. I'm not fucking saying that, but I think we all kind of know a big part of masculinity is being like heterosexual. 
And so if you're not, yes, there will be a lot of guys who are just like, you're gay, that's fucking wrong, dude. There'll be a lot of, you know, people who are deeply religious. There'll be a lot of guys who are a bit intimidated by that. Fair enough. Like, but there will be a lot of guys, you know, I'm a good example. There's a million guys out there who'll just be like, cool. Like, why do I give a shit who you fuck? Thanks for telling me. Like, cool, great. Like, wonderful, thanks. Like, like they just genuinely won't care. Why would I care? Why would a lot of people care? You're going to find a hell of a lot of guys won't judge you. They just won't care. Yes, you will find some guys will judge you. That's fine. Just, you know, don't spend that much time with those people. Cut them out. Learn to screen. There are a hell of a lot of people that judge me for a million different things, right? The fact that I'm in an open relationship, a lot of people will judge me for that. A hell of a lot of people will judge me for that, especially because it's a one-sided relationship. One of Imogen's older siblings literally said that I'm abusing her using that term, abusing her because we're in an open relationship. Even though she fully consents, she likes it. She enjoys seeing the girls with me. We have a hell of a lot of fun with all the girls that we see. It builds something between the two of us. We feel closer every time we see a girl. Like, But that's apparently abuse. There will always be people that judge you. I've been judged for the BDSM stuff, for lacking rough sex. Of course, I have a bunch of people that think that I'm a fucking abuser of women just because I like to tie them up with some ropes and run ice cubes over their body and tease them and make them beg for an orgasm. Apparently, that's abuse. There will always be people that judge you. Always. Especially if you're doing something sex-related. I've lost count of the number of people that judge me for a million different reasons. I've talked before about like on Reddit, I get a bunch of fucking haters on Reddit. You can't live your life based on who's going to judge you because the thing you'll find, especially if you get into content creation, like what I'm doing, like making a website, a podcast, a YouTube channel, whatever, especially once you start doing, once you start getting pretty popular, And especially if you're doing semi-controversial stuff and sex will always be semi-controversial, you're going to find no matter how hard you try, you will always get haters. And for the first year of my website, I tried so hard to walk on eggshells and not get a single hater. I tried desperately hard. I watered myself down. I never swore. I was really careful with all the blog articles that I wrote. I was really careful. Like, how will this be perceived? Will people know what I mean? And I still got haters and they would just misunderstand what I was saying. They would take something entirely out of context. They would hate me for some reason that was so goddamn creative. I never could have considered that someone would hate me for that. So if me trying desperate, if if when you're trying desperately hard not to be hated, you still get haters, you need to just embrace that, man. Especially if it's something like you having sex with other guys. Yeah, a ton of guys will judge you for that. You need to just embrace that and say like, fuck these people. I don't give a fuck what these losers think of me. Like, why the fuck would I care what some stupid insecure loser thinks of who I stick my dick in? What a fucking miserable sod you have to be to give a shit what someone else is doing that has nothing to do with you. Again, that tells you that their life can't be going as well as they would hope for. Otherwise, they wouldn't have time to sit around and like nag you and hate you and judge you and bitch about you and say that you're a fag or whatever weird thing they want to say to you. Fuck those people. Push them aside. So the final part you say is, also I feel when I say that I'm bisexual, people assume I like guys and girls equally which isn't true, but there isn't a word for it. Maybe heteroflexible. Sure. But like, do you really need a word to define you? Human beings, I'm talking as if I'm not a human being. People, we tend to want to categorize ourselves. And I really don't like labels. I'm someone that's always rallied against labels. I don't like to give myself a label. That's why even though on paper, you can just say I'm a libertarian. Absolutely. Everything I talk about, I sound like a fucking libertarian, but I never call myself a libertarian. You could probably say I'm fairly right wing with some of my, you know, political beliefs. I'm also pretty left wing on a lot of things as well. But like I'm pretty right wing when it comes to like, you know, tax policy, government intervention, all that kind of stuff. But I never call myself right wing. I don't want to get labeled because when people label you, you kind of get pigeonholed and it's hard to break out of that and people ignore the nuances of your positions and they just say, you're left, you're right wing. I'm going to ignore everything you say. Or, you know, you're this, I'm going to ignore you. So do you really need a label would be the first thing that I would say to you. Do you really need to have a label for what you call yourself? Or can you just be, I'm not going to say your name, but can you just be you? Like, is it enough to just be you? I, I get this sometimes from girls that I see where they'll be like, you know, 
So are you like a dom or are you like a daddy dom or like what kind of dom are you? Because there's different like words or labels in the BDSM like sphere or the BDSM community. And I always just say like, I'm just Andy. <laughs> like, like, sure, I like dominating. Sure, I like trying this. I like this kind of sex. But like, please don't call me like a different word. I'm not like a word. Jesus Christ, that is such a like a one dimensional way of framing myself. Especially when there's so many crossovers. It's like when people do the fucking... INTP or INJP or whatever it's called, the Myers Briggs, which by the way was proven false in the fucking 70s. So if you're using that, please stop. Anyway, when people do that and they're like, I'm INTP, it's like, the fuck does that even mean? Or if you want to go even worse, when people say, I'm a Gemini, so that means this. And it's like, Jesus Christ, how about I just stick a fucking label on your forehead and we can just call you retard? How about we just say you're a retard? We can call you a fucking pigeonholer. There you go. You like to sit in a pigeonhole? Go sit in the pigeonhole. Anyway, completely off topic, complete rant, side note. Yeah, if you really want a label, sure, just make one up for yourself. But do you really need one? Can't you just be you? Can't you just be you who likes to have sex with guys and trans girls sometimes? Can't that be enough for you? Like, what's wrong with that? 